let's welcome uh, Joe Bernstein, who will be talking about P strip promotion and B bounded row motion. All right. So first, I'll begin by uh, thanking the organizers for letting me talk. And the purpose of this talk is that uh, you can understand our rather technical and notation heavy main theorem. Uh, but it really is a beautiful theorem. <laughs> and all the nitty gritty stuff is just to make it rigorous. So this isn't a rigorous talk. I'm just gonna blast through some motivation and we can get a taste of all the cool pieces of the main theorem. And then hopefully we can all leave with an idea of uh, what we did uh, with me, my advisor, Jessica Stryker and her former student, Corey Borland. All right, so first uh, we have an action on standard young tableau, which of course we saw in the last talk called promotion. And traditionally this is defined using what's called Jules de Caen slides. Jules de Caen, of course, is that 15 number puzzle game, except uh, in French. So what we do is we remove the box containing one, and then we just slide in the lower of the left, uh, or sorry, of the right or lower element. So we slide it into the two, into the four, and so on, until we reach an outside corner. And we fill that outside corner with uh, n plus one, and then subtract everything by one. That's promotion, very cool. However, uh, the goal of our theorem is to work with maybe more general objects than just a standard young tableau. So we might want a different idea of promotion that doesn't involve these slides because in general, a slide might be kind of sticky to define. So we'll define promotion using these bender Knuth involutions, which will denote rho sub i. And what rho sub i does is it looks at i and it looks at i plus one. And if you're able to increase i, you do so. And if you're able to decrease i plus one, you do so. So in this case, we have a standard Young tableau. If you maintain the strict increasing and uh, increasing across rows and columns, then we do it. So let's look at row one, one and two. Well, you can't increase the one. It's got to be in that corner. So we do nothing. But row two, we can increase the two to a three and we can decrease the three to a two. So we do it. And we just do that until we get too big because obviously it's not going to work for like row 15. So we just go through it, doing it whenever we can. And if you believe me, uh, that's exactly what we got for promotion, of course, uh, as Judith Khan. All right, so we'll use this notion of promotion because we have these little individual actions that are uh, easier to work with than a, a slide. And moreover, we can use Benner Knuth involutions on all kinds of different objects in the Santa Young Tableau. Uh, rather simply. So I'll look at this first one, or uh, this third one, increasing tableau, where it strictly increases across rows and columns, but we will give up the uh, restriction that we have to use every number once. So here we have you know multiple sevens. So in this case, a slide might be tricky because you have multiple numbers and you have multiple empty spaces, and what do you do with that? But a Benner Knuth involution is rather simple. We ask, can we increase it and can we decrease it? And then we can also extend the idea to semi-standard Young tableau and similarly flag tableau, which are a uh, subset of semi-standard Young tableau, where we define, uh, the only difference here is we define what we do if we have maybe multiple things in a row, like, like in here. We say, can we increase the two? Yeah. Can we decrease the threes? Yeah, we can decrease these two, but not this third one. So we have to have an idea of what we do with that two, three, three. And rather intuitively, we're going to make that into a two, a two and a three. So we sort of just switch how many of each there are. And then finally, this increasing labelings over here says, well, what if we don't even allow i and i plus one? We might say, well, there, we can't even allow a four in this spot as we increase up the post set. That's not a big deal. We'll just look at i and the next thing above it. So this notion of Benner Knuth involutions is flexible enough that we can define it on all kinds of different objects. And the goal of our main theorem is of course to uh, see if we can generalize that sort of thing. All right, so that's promotion. We're gonna think of promotion as Benner Knuth involutions. Now here, how about another action now, row motion. This one isn't defined on labelings of uh, elements, but instead on order ideals. And the definition of row motion is you look at the uh, smallest uh, elements that aren't filled in, or the black ones are the order ideal. 
And then you create an order ideal based on those elements. So row motion will say, well, we get these and this one, and then everything else will be nothing. An order ideal is, of course, uh, you have to have everything beneath all the elements in your order ideal. And that's what row motion does. There it is. But just like Judith Khan, it's a nice intuitive definition or you know, a rather natural one, but uh, it's tough to sort of, uh, we want to break it down a little bit where this is all kind of doing in one fell swoop. But better can evolutions kind of do it in all little bits. Let's see if we can do row motion in all little bits. And we can. So toggle says we, uh, we look at an element and we toggle it on if the answer, if what remains is an order ideal and we toggle it off if what remains is an order ideal, otherwise we do nothing. So what row motion will do is we'll toggle from top to bottom in the post set. And at each step we ask at each element, can we toggle it on and have an order ideal? So in this one, no, we can't. If we fill in the top, it would no longer be an order ideal. So no, same for these two. When we get to the third row, we can't toggle this because we're missing this lower element, but we can toggle this off and we can toggle that on. So we do. And then finally the last row, uh, same condition, so we'll toggle this left one on and we'll toggle this one off. And lo and behold, we get the exact same uh, order ideal as before. So it's called, it was coined row motion by Jessica Stryker and Nathan Williams because this action that had been studied before, because it is a cool looking action and wasn't called row motion, can be defined as toggling uh, by rows. But of course, not every post that has rows. Uh, so an equivalent way of doing that would just be toggling top to bottom or reverse linear extension. All right, so we have a pro motion and we have a row motion and they're both individually cool, but in many cases or in very interesting cases, uh, we get equivariant bijections between uh, promotion on some objects and row motion on other objects. So in... Uh, it wasn't shown in this paper, but a good explanation is in the paper since they coined row motion, is we have Sen Young tableau of two rows and the triangular shaped post set under row motion. And then in this 2017 paper uh, with Kevin Dilks and Oliver Puchenik, they had those increasing labelings, remember the rectangle where it was like semi standard but you could have more than one of a number. They were shown to be in bijection with plane, uh, plane partitions under row motion, which is of course order ideals of a uh, uh, product of three chains, right? And row motion, it's very cool, toggle top to bottom, but in many cases, the so-called natural bijection between the objects, the increasing labelings or the order ideals, uh, it doesn't give you an exact translation to row motion. So meaning if you do a Benner Knuth evolution on one side, or if you do promotion on one side, it doesn't correspond to row motion equivalence through the bijection, but it does correspond to a, uh, an order that is conjugated toggling top to bottom. So first you figure out what naturally your bijection does, and then you show that that action uh, is conjugate, meaning they have the same order structure as row motion. All right, so now we're gonna get to the main object of our main theorem. And this is a very, very general case. And we were very excited to use it because uh, we thought it was maybe too general to ever be considered again. Uh, this is of course, again, Kevin Stryker and your former student, Corey. And let's explain some notation here. So first, this one, an increasing labeling of a post set with this uh, R. So P is this pentagon, R is these sets, and basically you need to uh, label this increasing up the post set and you can only use elements from these sets. So it's a very, very general idea of an increasing labeling because it doesn't have to be a tableau shape anymore. It can be any post that we like. Of course, a tableau, if you flip it around is a post set. And any increasing labeling of this is in bijection with an order ideal of that post set. And this post set is specially defined for it to be true. All right, so you have to, it's, you have to input the post set 
input the restriction function. And then we call that weird looking post like gamma. Well, let's see an example of it. There we go. So now an order ideal over here uh, on the gamma side corresponds to this increasing labeling over here on the increasing labeling side. And it's a pretty, uh, it's, it's a really ugly post set, but it's a very clear bijection once you've defined it because you just fill in the box that we labeled with uh, E6 and say, oh, look, this top element that corresponds to E, that's a, that's a six. Similarly, D4 is filled in, so the four is filled in there. So any order ideal over on the gamma side corresponds to an increasing labeling. Moreover, we have that bijection, but if you do bender knuth uh, involution promotion on this side, it corresponds to um, some toggle order on this side, not necessarily top to bottom, which would be nice. But uh, like I said before, the equivalent isn't with row motion, it's with some other toggling order and they call this uh, H gamma. Specifically that H gamma, uh, over on this side, we do better Knuth involutions from one to six or one to seven. And then over on the gamma side, we toggle uh, everything with a one, then everything with a two. So everything with a one, then everything with a two, then everything with a three, which is what I'm highlighting here, and so on. So over on this side, we'll do the Bender Knuth involution row three. So we look at all elements that are three or the thing bigger than three in the set. So here we have a three. Here we have a four because four is the next spot in the set. And here we have a five, which is again, one larger than three in its set. So those are all candidates to be increased or decreased. So then we look over at the uh, other side and, and that's what we're gonna toggle is these ones highlighted in red. And so you can determine which ones will be toggled and which ones won't be, because it has to still be an order ideal to toggle it. So as you can see, this one toggled on, but these two are un unable to change. And again, if you do all of those in order, that's what's called a toggle promotion. And in nice cases, this is conjugate to row motion, which is what we're after. Row motion is the, is the pretty uh, toggle order. So we really want to find cases where uh, we can get the row motion. And it works if we have this so-called column toggle order. And what that means is if we toggle ones, then twos, then threes, uh, they're all separate from each other. See this one, they're all tangled up. So like you have, uh, let's see, we have sixes next to fours. And we missed the five, bad news. But this one, they are easily divided into columns, right? We have one, two, three, four, five. So if you toggle in that order, through some algebra, you get that's the same as toggling top to bottom. All right. I'm going to make last two minutes. I'm going to quickly blast through this. So our main, so how we got to the main theorem is, well, what if we don't have order ideals, but we instead have, we just label it uh, with this P partition because there is a notion of a toggle on that. And the toggle on that is, you look at the number, you look at the biggest thing beneath it, and the smallest thing above it, and you flip it in the interval. So in this case, the three is between a one and a four. So we flip it to a two. And that's all that subtraction is on the top. All right. So what if we did the same thing with a uh, that nice post that we had before? And then we just move it to order ideals. Uh, so in this, in this case, the three is because there's three things without a, a dot. And then we can move those order ideals to the back to increasing labelings because it's a gamma post out of those increasing labelings. And in this case, this is exactly a semi-standard Young tableau because it has to strictly increase for the increasing labelings, but it uh, weakly increases because this is a uh, multi-chain. All right. And then uh, bender knuth on one side is the same as toggling left to right on the other, like we saw before. And now finally, our main theorem, I'll just show you this picture. <clears throat> so instead of always having semi-standard Young tableau, we can have any increasing labeling post set, right? Where it strictly increases up the post set and it weakly increases this way. And then we can get the notion of like a skew shaped tableau. We can remove 
uh, some stuff here and some stuff there. So it's a very, very general notion of semi steady young tableau or column strict tableau, and that's why we call it P strict, the very title of this paper. And then if you promote that using Bender Knuth involutions, it's the same as doing toggle promotion on a particular gamma post set. So uh, the very last thing I'd like to say is that we do get to row motion in very specific cases, like when uh, we're not working in the most general thing. So when the restriction function R is like a global maximum, like you might expect for a semi-standard tableau or uh, like this so-called flagged tableau where we have a max bound for each thing. All right, so my 15 minutes went rather quickly, but I can still, uh, thank you for listening. And I hope that you got a taste of why we looked at our main theorem and uh, maybe at least a hint of the beauty of it. Yeah, thanks. Let's all thank our speaker. We have a couple minutes for questions. I have one which is only closely related to what, what you really said. But if we look at the shredded occur sliding, this kind of preserves the number of descents in a standard Young tableau. Mm -hmm. And you maybe could be really able to define descents on a pole set because, or more generally on a linear extension of a pole set by simply looking at um, the, the linear extension as a permutation and then say i is the descent if i plus one is. No, if it's just a descent in the sense of a permutation. And I wonder if your toggle operation or the promotion and all these operations also kind of preserve the number of descents. Yes, well, I haven't uh, really looked much into it. Uh, I guess we took the Bender Knuth involutions because they were useful to us, and I haven't really delved into their. Uh, the reason why they came up originally. <laughs> okay. Well, I have one final thing to say <laughs> is that in the semi standard case, it's not a new result. It's a Gelfand Settlin pattern, our main theorem. <laughs> All right. So if I want to pull up the slides for the next percent of them. Yeah. I mean, well, let me make sure. Do we have any other questions for the speaker? Great. Well, let's thank Joe again. Thank you again for your attention.